So t- today we're going to talk about an uncomfortable subject, and it's the topic of what to do when you feel alone in your struggles. And I say, I say it's an uncomfortable topic because when you're alone, you, you seldom want, want to admit that you're alone. But it's ironic because it's the lack of acknowledgement of the aloneness that keeps us alone. And so to really understand this, and I feel allow the topic to dwell in a place that's appropriate, I think we absolutely have to start with scripture. And so we're going to unpack Deuteronomy 31.6. And if you read it fast, it'll say 316, and then you can make a pork joke of the other white meat about how this is the other 316, but that's inaccurate. So don't read it fast, read it appropriately. Deuteronomy 31, 6, and it says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them, because of them. Sorry about that. For the Lord, your God goes with you. He will never leave nor forsake you. One more time, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave nor forsake you. I want to dwell on that for a second. Because what sticks out to me most about this verse, I believe, is something that may not catch most people's eyes. And what do I mean by that? Let's unpack that. What does he mean? And what does the scripture mean by them? Like, I want to focus on the highlighted part first. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. Now, obviously, we have context for whom the book was written. But this is applicable to us now who, who are them in our lives? Who do we not need to be afraid or terrified of? Well, let's, 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 let's unpack that. Like, let's really identify who are them, which is terrible grammar, and I don't care. What are we terrified when it comes to weight loss? What are your, what are your deepest fears when it comes to weight loss and the concepts of being alone? Well, quite often, we've got to shed the old. We've talked about this, that 2 Corinthians 5.17 mindset of the new identity. And for some of us, we genuinely have to step into new friendships. Quite often, well, not even quite often, it's, it's, it's an actual psychological principle, but likeness attracts likeness, which means if you're sad, you're probably going to hang around sad people. And then you become this echo chamber of sad. And then everything happens to you and the world's against you and you're always a victim and you just can't catch a break. But if you're around, if you're trying to break that and you're around different people who are always optimistic and happy, well, then what happens? Well, then all of a sudden things happen for you. And of course you succeed. Why wouldn't you? Statistically, someone has to. Why wouldn't it be you? And you can, and it becomes an echo chamber of positivity. But quite often, when we're trying to break out of who we were, we've got to leave some of those relationships behind. And it's scary to think about the concept of establishing new friendships. It's also, I believe, scary for some of us to form new habits. You know, and, and I was I was speaking with a, a client, a friend earlier about this and the whole concept of weight loss being easy. And, and honestly, weight loss is easy, but what it takes to apply the easiness is where it really gets hard. And I think that's where a lot of us struggle in that we're not just trying to do better with our meal plans. We're not just trying to do better with our exercise. What we're trying to do is overcome 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50 years of programming. That's what the struggle is when it comes to weight loss. And so the concept of new habits for a lot of us, very scary. Likewise, new foods. I mean, I will say this until I'm blue in the face, myself included. I am, I am chief of these people in the has-been life, but 
we don't give new foods a chance. Like so many of us will say, oh, I don't like this fruit. I don't like that vegetable. And then when I ask people, well, when was the last time you had it? And it was like, ah, 20 years ago when my aunt made it in fat back. And you're like, what? You can't just throw out all vegetables because your aunt didn't know how to cook appropriately, but we do. And we take that one experience and we'll hinge all of vegetable kind on it. And we'll be like, I hate vegetables. And it like it never fails, literally never fails. 100% of the time never fails. If people just give vegetables and fruits a chance, they'll always come back to me later and go, oh, I had no idea zucchini could be this delicious. I had no idea squash could be this amazing. Yes, yes it can. But so many of us never get there because we label that we hate all fruits or we hate all vegetables. And it's not that we hate them, we just never give them a chance. But beyond all that, I feel one of the biggest things that keeps us in this lone place, this feeling alone place, is the fear of new vulnerabilities. It's, it's understanding that I might not be good at this now because it's new or I might not be smart at this now because it's new and it's very vulnerable to change ourselves into becoming what we want to be. And I think that's one of the biggest fears when it comes to weight loss is how am I gonna do this in a way that allows me to kind of keep face now knowing that I need to learn things I've never learned. And I think those are some of the fears for me at least, definitely put your own in there when it comes to unpacking what does them mean? And here's just a little recap of it. So many of us are so afraid of the new that we do anything and sometimes everything to stay with either who or what we know or to keep ourselves where we feel alone. I, I really like, I really want us to focus on that because I know I don't just think I know at some level that's true for all of us. So many of us are afraid of the new, that we do anything and sometimes everything to stay with either who or what we know or to stay alone. But what does God actually call us to do? Because so many of our struggles are truly, and I mean truly, and, 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 and check your heart with this and think about your life and let me know where I'm wrong with this statement, but so many of the struggles of our lives can absolutely be avoided if we just do what God has asked us to do. So in this context, what does God call us to do? And more importantly, why? So when we look at the things that terrify us and that call us to be afraid, God flips it up and he says, be strong and courageous. Well, why? For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. So what I love about this is in this scripture, there's the acknowledgement of fear. But then it's, it's said like, hey, it's there, but don't acknowledge it. Don't be terrified of it. Be strong and courageous. Why? Well, because the Lord, your God, goes with you. And not just does he go with you, he'll never leave or forsake you. And, and I want you to really think about this concept and this context here in that far too often, the times we cry out for God not being near us, if we're really being honest, are quite often the times that we've pushed God away the most. And so I've, I've walked with people who have struggled with this concept for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And, and I've, I've spoken with a lot of bitter people who are like, that's not true. And I'm like, well, tell me about the past week. How have you invited God into your life? And it's like, past week, man, I ain't talked to God for months. And it's like, <laughs> but it's true right like so many of us bring these deep emotions into the situation where we we can't see past us to see for us and so going back to that whole concept of well 
what does God call us to do in this situation? He calls us to be strong and courageous. And the reason he does is for the Lord, our God, goes with us because he never forsakes us nor leaves us. So from an etherical standpoint, from it, for like a head knowledge, right? Like we can read this, we can do all of the study of the text. But how do we actually apply it? Because that's where, insert lame analogy, the rubber meets the road. But that's where you actually get traction with this. Because I don't want us to just be thinkers. I want us to be doers. So knowing this, how do we actually bring Deuteronomy 31.6 to life? To me, it breaks down in three simple steps. Step one is you've got to surround yourself with like-minded community. Now, I want to be very clear because you're already part of a like-minded community in your struggles because misery does love company. And if you want to complain about the world, Facebook, like you can find anyone to complain about life with you on Facebook, and it'll be quite a miserable experience. If you don't believe me, <laughs> insert the elections. But if you genuinely want to move past this and start to conquer some of these fears that we have that lead us towards being alone, you need to become a part of a like-minded community. Good news, if you're watching this, you're already doing it well, so nailed it. But if you're not here frequently, or maybe you're checking this out on the replay, then maybe you should join us live because we've got a lot of good things to go, like we've got a lot of good things to offer. We talk about styling tips with our hair, things you may not know about us. We've got dad jokes for days, hashtag. But to really start to break out of this, you need to be around like-minded individuals who are striving to have better health, who are striving to honor God through their bodies. You need to be around people who aren't that crazy, though they may appear crazy because of how they treat their body well through what they eat and their desire to exercise, not because they have to, but because they like to, because muscular skeletally were designed to move. Don't be a lone wolf in all of this. We're not meant to be alone. Don't feel like no one understands the, the biggest challenge. And, and yes, I admit, I might not know how a 500 pound person lives life, but from 400 pounds and under, I got you. I know how it feels. And so we're all gonna have struggles, but people do understand which means you're not alone, which means that's great. You've got a friend, not just in Jesus, not just in Pennsylvania. Ooh, that's ironic. I'm in Pennsylvania anyways, but in this journey, you don't have to do this alone. You don't have to feel like no one understands, but you do have to get around people who are of the new mindset that you're looking to establish, who want to push you to be your best because they're pushing themselves to be their best. You, you need to be around people who believe you can do this because they know you can do this. You need to be around people who will mourn certain losses with you, but also bring you up from that because we're not meant to dwell in the negativity when Christ has given us so much goodness to focus on. The second part of this is to be in the word daily. And I think that's another part where a lot of us struggle. And, and if you're a part of the 63 Strong, that's why I've included it in the challenge. Because quite honestly, for being real, fear is a liar. I mean, fear does a really great job of not just telling you, but convincing you what you can't do. But the problem with fear is fear is predicting the future which means it actually doesn't know what's possible. And that's why I love the concept of number one, because number one will bring in the reminder of saying, well, wait a minute, if you're around people who have already lost 30, 40, 50, 60, X amount of pounds, well, then the fear that tells you, can't, tells you you can't do it is clearly a liar because you're surrounded by people who have done it or who are doing it. 
But the only way to really beat and overcome that fear and to acknowledge that fear is a liar is to start with the word daily, because knowing the truth truly sets you free. But by also being in the word daily, you start to remember, because we all know, we forget sometimes, but we all know we need reminded. The world has a different agenda. Like, I'm just going to be 100% honest with you guys. And I'm not lamenting and I'm not complaining. I, I need to be very clear that I am not complaining. But I'm in this boot camp on how to get publicity because one of the things that I need to do better is letting people know that this message and this approach to weight loss exists. And so join this, this boot camp for, for better PR. And it's the story of two approaches to weight loss, right? Guy number one, he's lost 65 pounds. He is literally half naked in both photos. He looks great. Don't get me wrong. Dude looks great. But then there's Jeremy who's lost 200 pounds. But the problem is Jeremy's fully clothed and he looks kind of quirky. He doesn't look like the kind of guy who's going to seduce you. And can you guess who has more engagement? He has hundreds of likes, hundreds of comments. And here's Jeremy with like seven people like great job. That's amazing why is that it's because the world has a different agenda and i've known that from the beginning and you guys and i have, have talked about this like my agent is very frustrated with me in terms of the book side of things because there are certain things i'm unwilling to do on my social media that is just status quo for the health and wellness industry i'm, I'm sorry i'm not taking my shirt off i'm not going to allude to half nudity to show you all of my successes that's just not how I'm going to do it. But a lot of us forget that the world has a different agenda for weight loss. The world has a different agenda for health and wellness. And I'm not saying don't get yourself sexy. You should get yourself sexy. But I just, I don't need to see you being sexy. Like keep that for your man or your woman. Like you, you be sexy for you and for your family. Like I don't need to see it on my Instagram feed. But the world wants to see that. The world needs to see that because they're so desperate for something that they're trying to mask. But when you're in the word, when you're in the word daily, you can see that there's a godly agenda and that there's a way to use your health and wellness to, yes, also be sexy, but also to do it as an act of worship. The only way you really get that balance is by being in the word daily. And beyond that, you get to see the reality of hope. I mean, you know, we, we look at our struggles quite often, like they're the biggest, they're like, like they're the biggest things in the world and they do matter. This is not me saying that our, our problems matter, but when you look at some of the things that let's just say that the, the disciples went through, like my struggles in sharing the gospel is way different than John's. <laughs> like I look at the way that Paul struggled for his gospel and I look at the way I struggle for the gospel it's not even close. So being in the word daily not only helps us eradicate the fear in our life and put it in its proper place as being as a liar, but it reminds us that we have a different agenda than the world. And that's okay because having different agendas just means we have different processes, but also it helps us remind us that hope is real. And the third part of this is being okay with progress. What is, what does this mean? Like, Rochford, why would we not celebrate progress? Because of what I've said earlier, we're not just losing weight. We're overcoming 10, 15, like we're overcoming decades, decades of learned behaviors. And so we'll mourn certain friendships that have become toxic because that person always drinks. We'll mourn certain foods that we love because we think we'll never see them again, even though they've caused us to be in a place where we absolutely hate life. We'll mourn the forgiveness that we have to give, if only to ourselves, to move forward. But if you really want to get past the times where you feel you're alone, then you have to be okay with progress. You have to acknowledge that editing certain parts of your life and letting go of them, that's okay. 
moving on from certain relationships, from certain scenarios, from certain aspects of your life, that's okay. Forgiving past hurt, whether it's someone who has hurt you or even just going into the mirror and saying, I forgive me for all the negative things I've said about me and for all the ways I've treated my body. It's okay, but it has to happen because the more you fight these things, the more you either gravitate towards toxic people who will go, well, why would you give the, why would you give that up anyways? Or because you know you shouldn't be with those people, but you don't quite want to step to the right side, you end up alienating yourself and you become alone, which isn't a good place to be either. So what do we do then when we feel alone in our struggles? We do three things. One, we surround ourselves with a like-minded community of people who love us, who affirm us, who understand the struggle, but want nothing more than to see not only themselves succeed, but to see you succeed. Two, we need to be in the word daily. It is truly the bread of life. It, it sustains us. It reminds us that we're called to be in the world, but not of it. And more importantly, to be okay with that. And, and dare I say, be happy with that. And three, you need to be okay with progress. And, and I would almost take it more emphatically. And I, I would say you need to celebrate progress. And yes, that is hard. I acknowledge that there are certain things in our lives we will need to edit. But that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. You're, if, you're, if you're 40, Hopefully you're not wearing the clothes you were when you were 20. Hopefully you've got a better style. I don't want to be wearing my stuff from the 90s. I am not. I am not bringing the, the bowl cut back. I am okay with that progress. But for real, part of 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and living in that mindset is accepting that new identity. And that's great. That's hope. That's possibility. That's real. You got to be okay with progress. For me, it really starts with Deuteronomy 31, 6, and understanding what it is to fear, how to segment that fear, but to also let it go. Because God's with us. God's always been with us. God will always be with us. And that truth alone should keep us not from feeling alone. But beyond that, He's given us a whole body of believers that not only do we get to talk to now, but we get to share heaven with, which is amazing. So sorry, even when we're done doing this, y'all going to see me in heaven still doing these podcasts and these, these Zoom things. So sorry, not sorry, but we're family. We don't have to do life alone and we shouldn't. So when you feel alone, just remember those three things. Keep it rooted in Deuteronomy 31.6 and take the steps out of feeling lonely because you don't have to do this alone. You don't always have to be alone. We don't want you to be alone. You've got us, you've got Jesus, you've got a real chance to make your life what you want it to be.